Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to walk you through the creation of a vintage Nike style advertisement poster. So something like this or like this, these have become super popular over the past two years and for very good reason. Not only do they have that really nice nostalgic quality to them, they also just work. They're simple, they're beautiful, but they're bold and they're eye-catching. It's so hard to go wrong with them, but only if you do it correctly. And that is what I'm about to show you. So let's get started. All right, so there's four key things that I pointed out about these posters that you must know before you start making them. Number one, they typically have a very minimal composition. It's often only image and then text, and the text is either centered at the bottom of the layout or on top of the image. And that text, or at least the headline, is very, very brief. It's typically only a one-liner, so it shouldn't really exceed 10 words. And of course, it's usually just a really solid piece of copy, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Number two, this bold text is often paired with very dramatic and bold photography. The photo that you're using or that you're taking must either be lit in some dramatic way or the product must be extremely focused within the frame or it could just be dynamic in some unique way. Look at this poster, for example. The lighting is very dramatic. The colors are nicely pronounced and it makes a good compliment to that bold text sitting on the bottom of the poster. Here's another example. This is a great ad and a great photo. We can see that the product and the logo are very centered and focused on within the frame and it's still a very bold and unique shot at that because of that seemingly dead or falling guy in the background, which pairs very well with that one-liner piece of copy right under it. All right, number three, you gotta use the Nike font. Futura Extra Bold Condensed. I love it, everyone loves it. It's bold, it's simple, literally almost impossible to go wrong with. Extremely versatile as well. That's for the header. As for the body text, I just recommend any serif, any tasteful serif. For this video, I'm going to be using Baskerville, but I would also recommend Garamond. It's a great font. There's something in that realm and you'll see when I get to it. Lastly, number four, texture, texture, texture. Gotta love texture. This is the most fun part of the design and it's not vintage if there's no texture. So you gotta add that texture. I'll cross that bridge when we get there though. So now let's hop into Photoshop and make a good looking poster. All right, so for these posters, I would recommend making them in a 16 by 20 document. So we'll make a new document here where I have command N and I'm gonna set this to 16 by 20 or it already is 16 by 20 because that's what I use all the time. Just make sure the resolution is at 300. That's very important. That's a standard DPI for print work and for design work. So make sure it is at 300. So I'll go ahead and open this document here. So we've got our 16 by 20 document and we're going to first start off with the imagery. Obviously, this is more of a personal choice and it depends entirely on what you're advertising or you're showcasing. If you're doing this for a brand or a company, you're going to want to find some interesting product imagery that relates to that. You could always do basic product shots as well. That's also pretty typical in Nike posters. If you're not actually taking the photo or having someone take the photo for you, then when you're looking for a photo online, I would just recommend keeping the tips that I said earlier in mind. So very dramatic imagery, dramatic lights, or it's dynamic in some sort of way or there's just a cool memo to it. Otherwise, I'm no expert photographer, so I can't really make this a photography class, but just get creative. And while you do so, think about the potential lines of copy that you could use in your header. So this is going to be the image that I'm using. And I took this photo. So it's an all right shot. It's got some dramatic lighting and it may not make much sense at first, but once I add the line of copy that I've chosen for this, man has always made just the right tool and it starts making a little bit of sense. You can see how this could be used incorporated in a poster all right cool so now i'm going to take this image and i'm going to drag it into my poster document so i'm going to go ahead and center this in the frame and just frame it as i wish to do so all right cool this is looking good but i think i want to frame this you may or may not want to frame your image i would say maybe seven times out of ten is better to frame it and of course that is what nike does in a lot of their posters as you saw in the references that I showed earlier, but I'm gonna frame this and here's how we do that. I'm gonna take a white colorful layer. So I'll go into my adjustments and choose solid color over here. And I'll just set that to white, press OK here. And now I'm just going to rename this bottom frame. Doesn't matter, obviously, you don't need to name your layers. I'm gonna go into the layer mask of this and I'm gonna press Command I to invert it. All right, cool. And then I just wanna mask this to about the bottom third of our document. So I'm gonna eyeball that. This kind of looks like a third to me, so I'm good. Then you're gonna wanna fill the mask in with white with this third. So I'm gonna fill that in. I also want to frame the edges of our canvas though, and it's gonna be a little bit tedious to select all of them and try and get them right. So what we could do otherwise is create a new layer. We'll fill this with whatever we have in our color palette 
using command backspace. We're gonna set the fill to zero. Then we'll open up the layer styles panel here. And we'll go to stroke. Make sure the stroke is set to inside on position. Blend mode to normal, opacity 100. I'm gonna make the color white and I'll mess with this size until it looks about right. I think something like 49 will do. So I'm press okay on that and boom. Now we have the bottom of our image frames and we have this nice white border around the top. By the way, you probably noticed by now, but I'm an eyeballer. I don't use grids. I hate grids. I'm just going to eyeball it. If you want to use grids, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. All right now, I'm just going to put these two layers in a group and I'll name that frame. Let's get started on the actual text now. Like I said earlier, you're going to want to use Futura Condensed Extra Bold. This is the signature Nike font and it just looks amazing with these posters. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a type tool to type out my text here, which is man always made just the right tool. And I might split this up into two lines. It's pretty long. So let's start right there. Oops, spelled that wrong. All right, looking good to me. I'm gonna size this up. Julio, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, it looks good to me, right? Actually, you know what? I wanna put this in the line with the frame. So I'll make that pretty big actually. And then what I wanna do is make sure that our tracking on this, which is this input right here, is really low. I'm gonna go with negative 45. For some reason, well actually it looks pretty good is the reason. All the vintage Nike ads use very low tracking. Same thing with Apple ads, it just looks good. Makes the font more cohesive, I think. So we'll put this to something very low. I'm going with negative 45. And then I also want to change the vertical spacing here, especially if you have two lines or more to something that's not this high. So I'm going to go into this input here and I'm just going to take this and drag to the left until it looks about right. Cool. Looks good to me. One more thing is when you're framing your text, you kind of want to match the distance between your image to the edge of the canvas with the text to the edge of the photo. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. I'm not going to actually measure that out. Eyeballing is my thing and it doesn't matter that much because I'm not really sending this to print and I don't think someone's gonna notice a one pixel difference. So just make sure you line it up in a way that kind of matches what it would look like if you were using grids and you were all mathematical with it. All right, this is looking good. It's looking like a nice poster already. Now it is time for the body text. This is pretty much up to you. You could just do like a simple, completely centered bottom text here and choose a serif font, not this font. Like I said earlier, I recommend Baskerville or Caramon. I'm going to use Baskerville because I feel like that's just more readable this time around. So I'll choose Baskerville regular or Libre Baskerville regular. And then I'll change the font size down. You want a good contrast between the size of the header and the size of the body text. And I also don't know why this is in all caps. So I'm going to change that by clicking this button here. Cool. So I may have glossed over this, which is my bad. But when you're adding this body text, you want to use the text tool and actually drag out a box for the text and just kind of line it up with your header text. This way you can use the alignment options over here which kind of fill the text out to the edges of the frame that you set for it, which is a really nice look. So this is dummy text, obviously, which I'll change later. And if you wanted to just center your text like this and make the frame for it, like I just said, and then use one of these paragraph alignment things, I recommend the ones on this side, I don't know what they're called, but the ones on this side so that they, I guess, justify to the edges of the frame that you set for it. And that's just a really nice look because let's say we use the standard middle, middle justifying or whatever the fuck, then it doesn't really align to our frame because the first line is not long enough. But if we set it to this one, then it adds those spaces in between so that our first line lines up just perfectly with the box that we set for it. With the body text, you're also gonna wanna go for a pretty low value in the tracking section over here. Negative 45 is working out just fine for this as it did for the header. And for the vertical spacing as well, you're gonna wanna play with that. You wouldn't want it too close to the other lines. You still want this readable, but definitely not too far out like this. So go for something in the middle range. I'm going for about, we'll do 32 here. Looks good to me. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do 30. All right, and that's looking good. So if you wanna just center your text, good for you. you. Made it easy for yourself. Personally, I want to split this up into thirds, like this really cool reference that I saw earlier. I'm gonna show you how we can do that. So I'm gonna delete this text right here, and I wanna split my canvas into thirds vertically. So how I could do that is, I know I said I don't use grids, but for this, you kind of need it. You got to go up to view, we'll go to guides, then we'll create a new guide, and we'll set this to vertical, and we'll position it 
at 33% of our document. So that's gonna be a third of our document, press OK. And then we'll do the same thing for the second third, which we're gonna set to 66%. And now that's two thirds of our document. And now our document is effectively split into three pieces that are equal to each other. If you wanna be real specific, you could add the 0.666 whatever at the end of it, but it makes no difference really. That's if you wanna be, you know, all mathematical all right so now i'm gonna make that same text box but i'll do it only in the third of this document and i'm gonna leave some space as well so that the text when we duplicate them aren't conjoining into another so i'm gonna make this box and i'll do the same thing i'll set the font to baskerville i'll change the size down to i don't know what we had it at before i'm gonna set it to 20 though turn this off i don't know why that's on and then i'll mess with the vertical spacing as well and you'll notice that the alignment here is looking kind of weird we want this to read from left to right still. So I'm gonna go ahead and align it left to right. I wouldn't really center align this stuff because you still wanna make sure it's red from left to right. But yeah, so go ahead and use a left, a justified last left, I guess. You could also use this one over here, but I would recommend this one. It just looks better. It's gonna make your poster look more filled out because now this text is adhering to its transform box. You might notice that my text is being hyphenated here because the word is being cut off. That's a look that you can go for. If you don't wanna go for that, then you can go up to the properties panel of your text, go to paragraph, click these little three dots here and just turn off hyphenate. And I think I'll do that because I don't like when things are hyphenated, but of course that's up to you. Next up, I'm gonna duplicate this two more times to fill out the rest of our document. So I'll duplicate it using command J and I'll drag that. Oops drag that in between our middle guides and I'll center that a little bit and then I'll do the same thing and center it in the right side of our document when I turn these guides off looks pretty cool it's a nice composition we got the big image up top nice bold header underneath that is that is contextualizing our image and then we have our body text split into thirds very nice composition going on here of course this is still dummy text so we don't want to use that I'm going to change this to some copy that I had written before this all right, cool. So I've changed the text to the copy that I had written for this. Obviously make it pertinent to the image and the header that you chose. Notice also how I left some space at the bottom of the canvas in case I wanna put maybe a logo there or my website or you know, something like that. And now it is time for the most fun part of this is adding texture. This is what we've all been waiting for is to slap some textures on this bad boy. So you could use pretty much any textures. I'm gonna use personally my own and black markets copy scan you're gonna need about two to three textures ideally but you could use you know whatever amount you want you're just gonna need a scanned dark texture a light paper texture and possibly just another wild card maybe to give your your artwork some more depth maybe you have like a cool noise texture or whatever so i'm gonna texture this and then i'll add the finishing touches with logos or websites at the bottom and so on so let me bring up my textures so i've got my texture scan volume one pack open right now this is available on my website got a multitude of textures in it we've got some scan textures some wild cards like this book cover or this pretty cool architectural print here and it's got vintage paper textures and so on if you haven't noticed yet the vintage ad that i'm making is for my asset shop for photoshop so it's only right that i use some of my textures on this and i'm also going to use copy scan by black market which i absolutely love let me make sure i get the right folder which i absolutely love they made some great stuff and they've got just a boatload of textures in here so i definitely recommend copying this texture pack if you don't have it already and mine as well of course i have to say that so i'm actually going to start off with a black market texture i'll find one that i like in here i think i found one earlier that was pretty nice maybe i'll go for this one right here copy scan 47 we we'll drag your texture in scale it up to size this one's also needs to be rotated a bit so i'm gonna rotate that scale this one up to size get it right cool since this is our dark texture we're gonna want to set this to screen you could also set this to lighten but i find you're just gonna miss out in some details in your photo you can see here on the keyboard that you don't get all the detail in here and i just think screen is a little bit of a better effect for this kind of poster but you will notice that it makes your artwork significantly brighter which is no problem because we can always just add levels adjustment on top of this to make up for that so i'm gonna make this a little bit darker with a levels adjustment just by dragging the mid-tones into the right and you'll also notice that if you're using a texture like this it may be tinted a little bit or maybe not be tinted at all this one is tinted green and i don't want it tinted green so i'm gonna do command u and i'll completely desaturate this i actually want it tinted to a warm color which this isn't required to do but i do think it really adds that nice vintage touch so now that this is completely desaturated i'm going to press command b and that's going to bring up my color balance panel which i can now add 
touch of yellow and red to this, which is gonna give me a nice warm tone. You would see if I press P on my keyboard, it turns that off. You can just see the difference here. It just adds some nice warmth to your poster. And I really like the effect. It makes it look a little bit more vintage in my eyes. So I'll press okay on this. It's looking good to me. Now we need to add a lighter texture to affect the white values on this. So I'll click on this levels adjustment so that when I drag my texture in, it goes above this levels. Let me pick up one of my textures. I'll go for my texture scan pack here and I'll drag in a, I don't know, let's do paper 10. I'll drag that one in and then I'll scale this up to size and I'll set the blend mode this time to multiply. This one's actually a bit hard to see. It just makes it kind of gray. So I'm gonna choose a different one. Let's choose vintage paper two and I'll scale this one up to size. And this one's got a nice tint to it. So it's really gonna add that vintage feel. I'll set this to multiply and you'll see that it affects pretty much the highlights of our image and it makes it this yellow tone which is nice maybe a little too strong in this so i'm gonna set the opacity down to maybe around 50 just to get that subtle touch of texture in the white values and it's also tinted that vintage yellow which is perfect cool so now you can just go crazy with whatever other textures you want to add i think something like this architecture texture with a tongue twister wow but this kind of texture is really cool because it gives your poster the effect or the illusion that it was like scanned in or something and there was a page printed on the back of it Pretty cool stuff. So you can use things like this. I'll set this to multiply and I'll turn it down. And it just gives some nice subtle detail in here as if this was printed on a magazine page where there is a, another print on the back of that page. So pretty cool stuff. Someone I would recommend who actually does textures like these, I think Black Market does as well, but I would also recommend Andre Azizov. I hope I pronounced that right, but he makes some great textures like this and I believe some of them are free. I'm gonna go to his texture pack right now actually and I'll drag some in here just to see how it looks. Okay, turns out those are on my other hard drives, so oopsies. Let's still go check them out. I'm actually just gonna use this other copy texture that I've had for a while. I think I also included this in my texture scans pack. So if you wanna use that, go ahead. Head. I'm gonna drag that in and I'm gonna use a levels adjustment to make it nearly 50% gray. So we're gonna get as close as we can. It's hard to tell actually with this red on it. So I'm gonna go command U actually, saturation all the way down, and then I'll go back to my levels and actually fuck, I have to put that on top. Drag the levels on top of that. Cool. And now I'll try and get this as close as possible to a neutral gray. I'm just gonna eyeball this. That looks spot on. Let's see, I'm gonna set this to either soft light or overlay, and that is just gonna give this some more texture in the details here. You can see when I turn this on and off, just add some nice extra noise and texture to this. Um, make sure when you do this, if you're setting it to soft light or overlay, that you have as neutral of a gray tone as possible. Otherwise, it's gonna either brighten or darken your image. So keep that in mind. All right, this is looking pretty good to me. Like I said, I'm gonna go back in a little bit here and just add some more details, such as my website on the bottom and my logo. And these are things that you could do as well with either your website or logo, or you can add another image here if you'd like. So let's say you don't have enough text to fill out all three spaces here. You could always just replace one of these with an image or a cutout product shot or something like that would look pretty cool and drag your logo in here as well just make it yours but obviously don't crowd this up too much you still want a nice and simple composition and you want it to be bold and easy to look at but still put whatever relevant information that you need in here so i'm gonna go ahead and drag my logo in as if there wasn't enough of my logo on this graphic already but i'm still gonna add this because i want to let me just make that black and i'm gonna put it right here i think where this text ends sort of is like like a period but i want to make that smaller actually and i'm also doing this because you know i have my logo plenty throughout the image already so i don't really need it too big in the corner here but if you want to do that feel free otherwise i think that looks fine and then i think the last thing i'll add is just my website and down at the bottom here so duplicate one of these texts and i'll drag that over here to the bottom and i'll just type in my website which you should know by now, come on guys, theronsupply.com. Got plenty of cool assets and tools for you to use and textures. I'm gonna go ahead and center that, which I just did kind of instinctually, but if you don't know how to center things on the canvas, press command A to select everything and then go up to here to your little toolbar and press this button right here. And that's going to center it in the canvas. It can do the same thing horizontally too, if you want to, just by pressing these buttons and align it bottom or top, just a little quick tip if you didn't know that, but I'm gonna align it in the center and at the bottom of my artwork. And I think I'll also make this italic just for a little spice cool it's looking good to me if i had a little more space here in effect if you have space here i would add just a, some text over my website which could pretty much be like a slogan or something just to like further contextualize this 
but I don't have enough space. And even if I did, I think I have enough words on the page. So I'm gonna do without that for now. But cool, this is pretty much done. There's just one final step that I'd like to do, and that is to merge everything and add some final adjustments. So the way we do that is by going to our utmost layer and do a command option shift E on our keyboard, which is using like your entire hand. But once you duplicate it, it's gonna pretty much merge everything that is visible in your document. So you're gonna have this layer that is pretty much your document, but flattened. And from here, we're gonna duplicate this one time. And now I want to add some final adjustments. I'm gonna use camera raw filter for this. So go up to filter, camera raw filter. And this is a great tool if you don't know. You should definitely be using this at the end of any design just to mess with the color and maybe the texture or whatever of your design. So this is kind of like Lightroom. If you've ever used Lightroom, you'd be familiar with this. If not, just get familiar. This is a great tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the temperature up on this. I think that's a nice effect and gives it sort of a more vintage look. Mess with the tint a little. Maybe I'll put it more magenta. Exposure, I don't wanna to play too much with because it's gonna overexpose our textures and we wanna still see that texture on this. And I'm not gonna to play too much with these values because I think it looks just fine how it is. Maybe the highlights are put down a little bit so you can see more of that vintage paper texture coming through. It's looking pretty cool to me. I really love how this like architecture texture in the background looks. It's delicious. Yeah, so this is looking good. I don't wanna to change too much. You can also mess with the texture and clarity sliders here, which I love to do. The clarity slider you can bring to the left and I'll pretty much blur, kind of like soften your, your whole image up, which is a very cool effect that I would recommend, especially for this kind of poster. You see if I bring this all the way to the left, it kind of fades out our text a nice, a nice bit, but it does it a little bit too much on the image. So just find like a happy medium, something you like. I'll go for negative 16. And also if you wanna really amp up your texture, you can of course do it on this texture slider. I think it gives a little bit too much of a textured effect, but if you wanna do that, you can play with this. I'll set it to something low like 13. Cool. And then if you wanna mess with the colors, we have our vibrance and saturation here, which I think I don't need to mess with too much. Maybe turn the vibrance down a bit. And down here, we have our color grading. There's a pretty much only three of these panels that you need to know about or need to use, which is the color mixer, color grading, and effects. Color mixer is pretty simple. This is basically a hue adjustment layer or hue saturation adjustment layer. And you can adjust the hue saturation and luminance of all of the colors in the image respectively. So if I wanted to change the aquas, then I would go to the hue of the aquas I can change that on the spectrum from green to blue. Same thing with anything else in this photo. I don't really have many colors going on here, so it's hard to tell, but I'm sure you could see what this does. For example, the orange, I could give it more of a red tint or more of a yellow tint. Personally, I'm gonna keep this how it was, but of course you can mess with this and give your photo some cool effects. Next up, we have color grading. This one is a little bit tough to explain, so I'm just gonna gloss over it. Basically, this color wheel just allows you to add a color tint to the tones of your image. So either the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. You don't really need to use this too often on final effects, but I would recommend learning this just to edit photos. But yeah, so I'm gonna mess with this just a little bit. Let's say I wanted to give a blue or green tint to the shadows or the darker parts of my image. Then I would drag this little ball out here. And obviously the further you drag it, the darker of that color is gonna be. So just find a color that you like. What I usually do is go to the outmost point on this and then I'll find something that looks decent and then I'll drag it in a little so that it's not too drastic of an effect. And here you can mess with the luminance and all if you really want to. So this is pretty much the same for all these sliders and I would just recommend playing with this until you find an, a nice effect. Otherwise, we can go into our effects panel here, which you can just add a grain if you want to add a grain. I personally think I have enough grain and texture on this, but I really love the grain that Camera Raw gives. So if you do want to add a grain, you can of course do that. I'm not going to add any for this poster. I don't think it needs it. But otherwise, we're pretty much done. This is looking very good. I'll press OK. And now I have a nice vintage Nike style poster all in my hands. I just made this from scratch. It's looking gorgeous. I love it. And I hope that you followed along and made something just as nice. All right, y'all, that's pretty much it. As always, I really thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I put out content like this every week to help you become a better designer. And while you're at it, turn on that little notification bell to let you know when I post. Also, feel free to check out my website, that is theronsupply.com, which you just saw for a good 20 minutes, and see all the cool design tools and assets that I have available for you. I also have a ton of freebies if you want to check that out as well. I've got free Xerox actions, free film wheel actions, free mockups, and so on. So definitely go check that out. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.